everyone, my name is Maddie Hildebrand and I'm a marketing intern at Planet LA Records. And in honor of Women's History Month, I'm here with Gina Fournier and we're going to do a little interview to talk about what it's like being a woman in the music industry and her experience and if she has any advice. So welcome, Gina. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We're so excited. So I will start with our first question. So What made you want to work in the music industry and how did the creation of Coconut Spaceship come to be? Well, first and foremost, I am a musician and I've been performing in Los Angeles for 10 years. Um, So actually, I had a bandmate that was working with Planet LA Records and that's how I got involved in the music industry because I worked my first event production with Planet LA and went on to become their director of brand partnerships. Um, So I was really inspired by Mark and all that he did, supporting artists, supporting causes. And I had always been doing uh, kind of DIY marketing with my own band and really been pro indie artist. Um, And it had been my dream to always start a label, but I didn't really have the confidence to do that until I started working more productions with Mark. And then I went on to work for Bonnie Raitt's record label, And she's a 10-time Grammy Award-winning artist, and I worked with her all-female run uh, management team who also handled her uh, production company and her record label. Um, And I went on to do business management, so I learned all the ins and outs. I did everything from mailing CDs to radio to handling guest lists to uh, handling finances as well. So I learned a lot from them, and that really helped give me the confidence um, to start the label, but also it was during the pandemic when I saw, really thought about a lot of the issues going on in the music industry and how there were not enough uh, woman-owned record labels and just things as a musician that I wanted to see change. Uh, So that really is what inspired me to start Coconut Spaceship um, and also working with Amy Lovett Summer of uh, Softer Sex Productions. We actually merged and she had been doing all female fronted um, bands and artists, uh, putting them on stages for about five years. And then she came on to help with our A&R. And the goal was also to make a more just inclusive space for artists um, to support each other. Awesome. I love that. And so our next question is, what does your day to day look like while being the founder of Coconut Spaceship? Is it pretty consistent or does it depend on the day? Definitely depends on the day. Um, and also if we have an upcoming production. So we just launched last June and then our business model has always been the festival because people don't really buy albums anymore. And Spotify has really changed the industry. And you know, with streams, artists aren't even making as much money with that. So also from working for a record label, I saw where all the money went. And a lot of it is coming from touring and performances on a big scale. Um, So I really wanted to create a festival and grow that. And I had seen other indie labels in the past do that and have these really cool parties and then um, grow those festivals into something bigger, starting out bringing their friends on and then getting bigger artists. Um, Uh, With the goal being like the festival initially, um, you know, leading up to the festivals, my days are always very busy with the production, um, helping coordinate with the artists, get backline gear, Um, coordinate with vendors or sponsors. Um, And then when we're not doing the festivals, I've been focused on growing the label and um, adding to our roster. And also we plan to launch as a full service creative marketing firm very soon as well. So we are doing meetings every day with artists, brands, and um, just new artist friends looking to um, get some insight and some help. And we love to help people at all levels and all budgets as well. So we do some consulting with smaller indie artists and then bigger brands as well. Um, So every day is a little bit different, but definitely focused on making new relationships and building the ones that we have as well. Awesome. Yeah. A few of um, the Planet LA interns got to um, help with your touchdown festival. I loved it so much. I think it was like my first like festival event since the pandemic. So that was so awesome. I loved it. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, it was so um, fun. It's really fun for me too. And 
really cool to see, you know, a lot of these people performing are friends of mine I've known for a long time. Yeah. And then there are some artists new to me that are coming from Amy and then Ryan from Niantic Media, who also helped co-produce the event. And the idea was to merge all of our scenes together and bring artists that we all had connections with or, you know, some crossover with um, and get them up on the stage. And especially after the pandemic, um, a lot of artists didn't want to play inside venues and a lot of venues had shut down. So we wanted to give a space for artists to play and also people who didn't feel comfortable playing inside yet or going inside. So we tried really hard to find somewhere with an outdoor space and we're so glad we found Oracle, uh, which is a female founded um, bar as well. So we're really happy to support them. And so far we've put um, between our ticket sales, um, the businesses and the vendors, like over $20,000 back into our community. And we're currently operating as um, like a nonprofit collective. We are not a nonprofit and we do hope to, to scale and be able to compensate ourselves. But a lot of us are putting in, um, you know, our time and we've paid over 50 artists. Um, so from like a musician standpoint as well, there's a lot of things that we're doing to try to support musicians and helping them have a cool stage. Like we bring in all those lights, we bring in the stages, uh, the big stage for outside. We bring in all the sound for both stages. So we want to make sure they have good sound, good lighting, have um, content they can get to help continue to promote themselves. And we always take video and photos and we're, we're still compiling a lot of that. And we hope to keep releasing that and giving more exposure to artists. Yeah, I thought it was really cool too to see like it seemed to me like everyone was friends with each other. And so it was so awesome. Just like it really like felt like a community. And I was like, oh my God, like that's so awesome. So Yeah, and that's what's been it. Thank you. That's what's been amazing is and Greg Greg in Good Company is a huge help as well. He runs an open mic uh songwriters night uh, at the North End on Wednesday and he helps uh host our um writers round block. So it's all acoustic that we always start with. And he's really connected in the songwriter scene. So we, there's a lot of crossover with our friends, but it's cool because they're also getting introduced to new artists that we may not have some crossover with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So kind of going off that, so you're also involved with the performance aspect of the music industry with Little Galaxies, and you play for various other projects. Would you say that having the performance experience helped with entering the business side when you started Coconut Spaceship? Yes, definitely. And I think that's partly what inspired um, me to uh, to do the festival and give a platform to indie artists uh, because there were a lot of issues um, that we were dealing with and we're always um, hoping the promoters are promoting the show. Um, but really a lot of people are profiting off of musicians and a lot of musicians aren't even getting paid at all for shows. And so that was really important to be able to compensate, you know, Later, we hope to be able to, to grow and compensate even more. But the fact that we're paying over 50 acts is, I'm really proud of that. Um, but not just yeah. that, we're building community. And as I said before, helping them get content so they can keep getting more exposure and connecting with new artists. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. So how has your experience in the music industry been as a woman? Are there any challenges you face? And do you feel there are double standards for men and women in this industry? Um, yes. And um, I've been playing music for 10 years. So I've been following what's been going on with women in the music industry as a musician and uh, the business side. And um, as a musician, I definitely felt when I was younger, there were promoters producers and label owners trying to take advantage, offering you things and expecting things. So that is a huge issue. Um, but also just getting more women on stages um, and in alternative music, because 10 years ago, most of the most of the women I saw playing music were singer songwriters or pop musicians or hard rock. So it's really cool to have seen that evolve and see people putting more different types of um, female musicians on stage and just seeing more women do rock and alternative music is really rad. And I think that's because the more women that are doing that and starting that kind of music and women are seeing other women doing that kind of music is really getting them to pick up a guitar or a bass or the drums and learn. And I think that's um, 
really important to get more women on stages because it tends to be a huge problem specifically with festivals where they're not booking enough um, acts with just one female or non-binary artist. Um, and that's something that we do. We always book at least 50% acts that have at least one woman or non-binary member. And it doesn't have to be the front because that can be a little sexist as well. Um, and that's another issue as well. Like even a lot of guys will refer to me as a singer, but I play guitar and I play bass. I also co-produce my music. So that, there can definitely be a double standard there or you're good for a girl or um, you're my favorite female guitarist. <laughs> um, so I think we need to kind of change that and not just assuming any women in music are uh, singer songwriters or just singers or whatever that is. Um, I think I, I personally feel really powerful holding an instrument on stage and that's really important. Um, another thing I'd say um, as a as a female business owner um, and in the music industry, especially I've, especially I've seen this happen a lot of women standing up for themselves or being firm and then being called a or, <laughs> or, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> when guys are doing it all the time and they're not, um, getting those same titles or it's okay for them to be firm, but women not. And, um, you know, when you're working with dozens of people and trying to put on a production and you have to be firm, like I really try to always bring good vibes, but we're all in like, you know, a stressful atmosphere trying to make everything to come together. And it's amazing when it does. Um, but I do feel like there is a little bit of that double standard, like it is harder for women sometimes to be firmer um, and not get that backlash. Yeah, I feel like to Taylor Swift, she's a prime example of all of that. So it's a very interesting topic. And I think we definitely have seen that more in the recent years that there are huge double standards with women in the music industry on like the business side. Yeah. And I actually attended this really cool women in music seminar at YouTube a few years ago with Amy. And um, they had this um, woman uh, inclusion study um, in the in the recording studio. I believe it was an Annenberg USC study. And the professor was just showing this whole report about um, all the discrepancies with women across the board from working in the music industry to owning labels to the songwriters, the engineers and producers. And that's actually a huge issue I see with specifically female engineers and producers not getting credited. Um, and I think only 2%, 2.6%, I think I saw recently, uh, of producers and engineers are women. So that's a huge issue. Um, I know Bjork has talked about that a lot, not getting credit on, pr on um, production. And um, Angel M is another local uh, producer and engineer, and she was talking about that recently. And, um, you know, that's it's terrible that... Um, people assume a lot of the times that it's the men that are doing it. They're not giving credit to the woman. Um, and even if they know it's the woman, still they're not getting credit. And she had worked yeah. on some big projects. Um, and I've seen that a lot with uh, working for Bonnie Raitt as well. Uh, she's one of the best slide guitar players in the world. Um, and she didn't even break through until later in her life, which is huge for women because that's another issue with women is age discrimination, that there's less women um, after I believe age 25 that are breaking through. Um, and if they are, it's usually behind the scenes. And I don't like to use the term older because I, I believe, you know, like everyone is, uh, everyone making music is youthful. Like it's, um, it's an energy and we've personally put on, put women and non-binary artists on our stage from early twenties to late forties and men as well. So we don't want to discriminate on age. And I feel like it only makes you more experienced um, if you um, at, at a certain age. So I don't see that, um, you know, as a downside, like a lot of la uh, labels do that won't even look at artists because of their age and especially women yeah. for that matter. Yeah, that's awesome. I think every you nailed it, everything you said. So we have one final question and it is, what is your advice for all the women out there who want to pursue a career in the music industry? do it. <laughs> like we need more of you. Um, it's really important. Um, I mean, and, and pick up a guitar, pick up an instrument as well. Like, um, I want to see more women on stage making music and behind the scenes. And, um, I was, I was sick of a lot of things and working, uh, under men. And most of the time I'm promoting music, it's reaching out to 
blogs or radio, it's, it's a lot of, it's mostly men. So if women don't start doing it, then it's never going to happen. And we need to inspire each other, work with each other, um, not be competitive with each other. I see this all as a win-win, you know, we're always trying to promote other women in business. I think I did like 50 posts yesterday in my stories. I'm just tagging all the badass women that I know and seeing how we can work together. Even if we're doing similar things, how can we still help each other or pass on our resources if we can't, you know, handle stuff. So, I mean, I think it's really important for women to just do it. Like if you're not feeling confident, it's okay. You're not going to know everything. Um, I thought I had to know everything to start a label. And I, even though I did know a lot, I still wasn't feeling confident until I just did it and uh, saw how people were reacting and saw how supportive everyone is. It's given me even more confidence and I keep learning as we try to grow and, um, and also educating yourself is really important. So that's something I would definitely advise like, Sure, we can all just say we're going to do it, but I think it's really important. Like, um, educate yourself, know how to get in the room with guys and speak the language if you're going to be producing in a recording studio. Um, you know, a lot of anyone can say they're a producer, anyone can record music on their iPhone now, or, you know, um, but I think really taking the time to, um, to find resources. There's so many online, and there's so many courses and organizations as well that are empowering women and teaching women. Uh, from everything about the music industry to engineering. There's Sound Girls and Beats by Girls who do workshops to help teach more women um, how to do those things. And then, yes, there's a ton of panels. So just get the info um, and do it. (laughs) Yeah, well, this was very informational. So (laughs) that was awesome. Off to a good start. Um, So that was our final question. So thank you so much, Gina, for joining us and letting us interview you. Of course. Thank you so much. And thank you for all your help at Touchdown. We really appreciate it and the support. And thank you so much. Of course.